OPEC and independent producers do not intend to revisit their output agreement before June. And that uh, continues to be the case. Uh, the Saudi Arabian energy minister, Khaled al Falah made that clear. He spoke to me in Riyadh and said oil inventories will also not be anywhere close, just in case you had the suspicion that it will come back to the level needed by the time OPEC meets then. He also said he's waiting until the second half of 2018 to see whether the supply and demand curve is really where it needs to be. I think it's premature to change views from what we had uh, in Vienna uh, in November. Um, we never expected uh, December and the first few months of 2018 to be the months when we're going to see major uh, draw on, on, on um, oil in general. And we've seen indeed builds that surprised uh, a few people, especially with gasoline and, and product builds in general in the U.S. Uh, but if you look at the totality of the number of oil and products, I think they're consistent with the seasonality that we expect and with the continued uh, high level of uh, conformity and compliance by, by uh, the countries that are party to, uh, to, to the supply uh, constraint agreements. Um, markets will always overreact to short-term uh, events. We've seen them uh, react uh, you know, in a bearish way when such data came out. And from my perspective, I am looking for the long term. I am looking for really the second half of 2018 to see where we are in terms of supply and demand. So uh, there, there is no intent to, uh, to revisit what we've agreed on. So it's interesting because you've got quite a few folks coming out with calls, and I know you're used to that. Goldman Sachs uh, came out with a note, and they're pointing out that uh, you might be looking at early, an earlier end to your cuts uh, as a result of, again, the data that's, that's shaping up. Uh, do you still feel strongly about pushing through through 2018 with this agreement and revisiting it in the summer as it when it happens? Our uh, single uh, data point that we will be monitoring as we go forward is inventories and how closely aligned are they with the global need. Uh, so the five-year average, depending on what five years do you look at uh, has been uh, referred to uh, as the target and as I mentioned in Vienna we will determine that in terms of changing it to a numeric target hopefully by uh, by the June meeting and I don't think we're going to be anywhere close to it mm -hmm. before then unless something extremely um, uh, unexpected uh, takes place and it persists for a longer period of time. So we're not going to be reacting to short-term events. I want to bring it back to the domestic story. Uh, what are your plans in terms of uh, reducing sub subsidies and increasing energy and, and fuel prices? Do you have anything firm at this point, a clearer sort of vision? On the energy front, uh, uh, price reforms, uh, of course, has been uh, part of uh, of our reform program. We had a, uh, one uh, set of price changes that, that took place uh, two years ago. And, uh, and, and the next uh, phase will take place January of this year. Electricity tariffs will be raised partially, not to their full uh, target of allowing uh, cost recovery by, by, by uh, the electric utility, uh, assuming mm -hmm. Um, fuel prices at international level. Also, gasoline, uh, 91, will rise to uh, international uh, prices, uh, which is which is a significant first yeah, yeah. step. In t let's stay with the LNG for a moment, because uh, you were invited by the Russian president Vladimir Putin, and there were some uh, pictures and videos circulating of you in some very thick winter clothing, which was a rare sight. Uh, Give me a sense of the kind of appetite that uh, Saudi Arabia has in terms of pursuing projects with Russia, be it in Russia, in the Arctic, or, or elsewhere. Importantly, from my perspective, is to capitalize on the clear alignment of interest on economic and particularly energy. And we've seen that come to bear clearly on the oil side, where both countries are probably 
benefiting significantly in terms of uh, oil market stability and its impact on the finances of uh, of the two countries. So that that has created uh, an environment of trust, an environment of uh, interest. In my various visits to Russia, I've become impressed with the capabilities of the Russian industry uh, and, and, and their ability, but I've also uh, become uh, equally uh, convinced that we can do business with, uh, with Russian partners. We've invited Russian companies to come and invest in the kingdom, and there is a $1 billion uh, fund between the PIF and, and the direct uh, Russian investment fund to invest in uh, companies in, in the energy, oil and gas in particular, and we're evaluating a number of these investments. I think uh, Saudi Aramco may invest with Russian majors abroad. That's, that's a clear possibility, including yeah. your earlier question on gas, but also on refining investments um, and, and markets that could take either or both of our crude oils. So there are discussions between Saudi Aramco and Russian companies about investing and refining and downstream assets.